Hello Booktube, hello friends, welcome to Lizzie Payne Loves Books, I'm Elizabeth and I am back in my utility room today for another segment of my bookshelf tour. I have been promising you a middle grade bookshelf tour and I sort of started that in my previous video when I showed most of what you can see there on those two shelves which are all of my fantasy books or in some cases dystopian. I don't know. I, I kind of think they go hand in hand, although generally dystopian does not really include fantasy. It's just futuristic. I don't know. I've got a few science fiction maybe that are mixed in, and I showed you those in my previous video. Behind, uh, in the back though, I do have some contemporary YA books, and I may include those in this video, but I primarily wanted to focus in this video on my middle grade series that I own, or at least if I don't own the whole series that I own a portion of, and talk about whether I've read them or not. I do have a lot of um, middle grade books that are temporarily in a couple of boxes over here, and I don't know if I will get to all of the random ones today or not, but I mainly want to just talk about the series books whether I've read them, whether you've read them, let's just chat. Um, you, you have probably seen videos here in my utility room before. Uh, above that, I also have my women's fiction, and there's a few overflow books up there. Across the way, I've got my guideposts and Annie's books, my Amish books, two shelves of mysteries, mostly cozy mysteries, and uh, behind the boxes are more mysteries and a few other random things. So this is, like I said, my utility room. I've got my washer and dryer over here. <laughs> That's where the cats eat. The cat featured today is Harry. He is a little bit mad today because I'm making him stay inside. He's been a little bit sick. I usually let him go out during the daytime, but he picked up some sort of flu bug or something and he just wasn't coming out of it very quickly. And Got to where he wasn't eating much and drinking very little. So we took him to the vet yesterday and now I'm making him stay inside. So he knows there's a door there, even though it's temporarily covered with this table. But he's hoping that if he stays close to the door that somebody will open it and he might be able to slip out. Anyway, he's going to hang out with us, I think, for this video. So let's talk about the middle grade series that I own. Let's just start up here. I have these sorted out. I've been doing some organizing, which is why... There are series books up here, and the ones in the boxes are all the random stuff. But um, what I have here first is a series I have not read, and I'm wondering if any of you have read this. This is by Anna Staniszewski, I think is how you say her name. It, the series is called Dirt Diaries. The first one is The Dirt Diary. The second one is The Prank List. And then The Gossip File I just got recently. And then book four is The Truth Game. What I understand about this series, just from reading it, uh, reading the back of the book um, a couple of years ago when I first got this one, is that it's about a girl whose mother starts a cleaning business, and she's a little bit upset about that. So that is the Dirt Diaries. Um, before I start getting them covered up, I also have the Penderwick series over here. Um... The first one is The Penderwicks, A Summer Tale of Four Sisters, Two Rabbits, and a Very Interesting Boy. This is by Jean Birdsall. I have finally finished reading this series, and I set out to collect the entire series in hardcover. And I've almost collected all of them in hardcover. I do have all five books now. Uh, the second one is The Penderwicks on Gardam Street. And the third book, The Penderwicks at Point Mouet, I finally found it, but it was soft cover, and I went ahead and got it anyway, just so that I would have it. But I will be trying to find a hardcover to replace that. Uh, then the fourth book, The Penderwicks in Spring. And the last one is The Penderwicks at Last. I really, really enjoyed this series. I just thought it was great. And as I mentioned in a previous video, I would kind of like to lead a read-along of the Penderwick series maybe next year. A few of you have already commented that you would like to participate. So whether you've read the series or not, uh, let me know if that's something that you would be interested in. We probably wouldn't start with the first one until maybe 
May, for middle grade May, and then just kind of read one a month throughout the summer and into the fall. I think that would be a lot of fun. Okay, so then I only have one and three of this series, and I think there are only three so far. This is what I call the Toast Mysteries. They originally were called the Toast Mysteries, and eventually they changed the name of the series to Framed because that's the name of the first book, although... The rest of the series doesn't have anything to do with frames. It has to do with toast, which is the theory of all small things. T-O-A-S-T. And this first one is framed. The third one is trapped. I can't even remember the name of the second one. Um, vanished. That's it. Anyway, this is a really fun middle grade mystery series. And I hope that James Ponty will write some more of those because those are really fun. And then I believe this series is finished now. I've read the first two uh, Donna from a studio in the library just told me that she read books three and four, I think in March and, or maybe she finished them up in, in April. I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm jealous now because I, I love the series. I've read the first two and I need to get on the ball of reading the rest of them because they're so fun. Three Times Lucky, the series is by Sheila Turnage. It is the Mo and Dale mysteries. The second one is the ghosts of Tupelo Landing. The third one is The Odds of Getting Even. And the one I just got from Book Outlet is The Law of Finders Keepers. This is about a young girl, Mo, who uh, was named Moses because her adoptive parents found her floating down a river in a basket. And the overarching mystery that she's trying to, um, to discover in these books are who her biological mother is. She wants to know... And um, hopefully by the end, she will find out. This is a series I have also read, and I wonder if some of you have read it as well. This is such a cute series. This does have a little bit of a um, fantasy element, but more more realistic than fantasy. The I think this is the first one, 11 Birthdays. And then we have Finally. Oops. Oh, goodness. I like paperbacks, but they don't stand up well. <laughs> 13 Gifts, Graceful, I think is the next one, and The Last Present. This series is by Wendy Mass, and I really, really enjoyed them. They are just a fun, light, middle grade series with just a touch of Supernatural. So I'm not going to go into all these behind there. I will show you. These are just some random things. I've got some old Star Wars books and... Some other old books. I do have three of the Janie series, Face on the Milk Carton series by Carolyn B. Cooney. I, I think there's one more that I don't have. And just some other random books. Most of those uh, back here in this stack I have not read. I have read Where the Red Fern Grows. Okay, then the next series is... The Tillerman Cycle. I would love to be able to get matching editions. Uh, ideally, I would love to find hardcovers of all of these, but I had such a hard time finding the last four that uh, I'm happy with just having these. But I love this hardcover edition of the first book, The Homecoming, and I really don't like this edition of Dicey Song. I'm going to need to find a different one of it. This one is not a bad cover, but the fact that both of these are mass market paperbacks and now I have the rest of these in the trade paperback size makes me want to find Solitary Blue and Dicey Song in um, in at least covers to match this. Um, so this series is about uh, the Tillerman family. The next one is The Runner. I'm hoping to read it this month. I just brought it back in here for this video. Come a Stranger. Oh, I got these out of order. Sons from Afar, I think is next. Yes, and 17 against the dealer. Um, these, I think, were contemporary when they were written, or were they historical? Actually, I'm not sure. The first book is about these four children who are basically abandoned by their mother in a car. She tells them to stay put. They stay until they you know, have no more food or water and have to go to the bathroom and all that. And then they decide to start heading towards the only other person that they've ever heard their mom talk about, and that is an aunt. And when they get there, which is pretty miraculous that they even make it there, then 
some things happen, and then they eventually decide to try to find their grandmother. So um, that's where they end up, and Dicey Song takes place then when all the kids are there with their grandmother. Solitary Blue is about a boy who moves to town in the same town as them, and the Tillermans are kind of... Um, I don't want to say they're in the background because it's really part of the series, but they're not the main character. So those are the only three I've read, and uh, I am really excited about reading more of these. This is a series I have not read. This is by Martha Finley. I think this is really more of a classic Christian series, the Elsie Dinsmore, Dinsmore series. There are there's an older edition, older classic, um, and I think. Yeah, so this is the this is book four of the original Elsie classic. I don't like these covers. I just really don't. Um, and then they updated them a little bit. And this is what the newer editions look like. I've got books one, two, and three. It is a long series. It takes Elsie all through her life, I believe. Um, Elsie's Endless Wait is book one. Elsie's Impossible Choice is book two. And Elsie's New Life is book three. And then Elsie's Womanhood is book four, which I just showed you. So have any of you read the Elsie series? I was talking to a young girl, like an adolescent age girl, once at a book sale. She was there with her mom, and I think she was homeschooled. And they were looking at books, and I asked her, you know, who were some of her favorite authors. And she named Martha Finley right off the bat. So that has made me curious about these books. And um, I have not read any of them. Okay, looking at the box here of just uh, some of the random series books I have. Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. I have read that. And I am I getting this mixed up with... I'm trying to think if this is a series... Or not. Okay, I had to stop the camera for a minute because I always get Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine mixed up with Just Ella by Margaret Peterson Haddix. So I've read this one. I listened to it on audio. There is a book two and there's a book zero in this series that I have not read. And I think I have a copy of the... Um, just Ella, and I've read at least two of that trilogy, but um, I don't know. We may come to it at some point, but it's probably mixed in with all these books. Okay, I've read at least a couple of these, I think. Well, I know I've read this first one. The Mother Daughter Book Club by Heather Vogel Frederick. This is just a fun series about mothers and daughters, and they uh, are reading a different classic book in each of the uh, you know, in each installment of the series. And in this first book, I believe they read, oh goodness, what is it they read? Little Women, I think. And then in the next book, they read Anne of Green Gables. So it just goes on from there. And I really enjoyed the ones that I've read so far. I don't think I've read more than two. And now I'm second guessing as to whether I've even read the second one. But uh, anyway, it's a fun series. I don't know that I need to collect them, but I do have this one to just kind of remind me to continue reading the series. This is the sequel to a Newbery winner that, um, this is From Norvelt to Nowhere by Jack Gantos. The Newbery winner is called Dead End in Norvelt, and I've got it in the other room on my Newbery shelf. I've read the first one. I don't think I've read the second one. This is a series I've been interested in. I only have this first one, Alcatraz versus the Evil Librarians by Brandon Sanderson. Um, I think this is on Overdrive for me. I don't know if it's on Hoopla or not, but anyway, I can listen to that at some point. I've had these two sitting around on my shelf for a long time. I think only, uh, let's see, I think this is book one, Half Magic, and I don't think this is book two. I think this is maybe like book five, Magic or Not. It's a big series, uh, as I recall. They're by Edward Eager and... I guess I should have put those with the fantasy books. Well, and I should have put the Alcatraz book with the fantasy books too. But like I said, or I think I said earlier, I didn't actually go through these real good to pull out the ones that are more fantasy that I should have shown in the last video. Um, Caleb's Story, I think is the third book or is it the second book after 
Sarah Plain and Tall. Sarah Plain and Tall is a Newberry winner. It's a trilogy. Um, I've got Sarah Plain and Tall on my Newberry shelf. I could have put the Newberry winner on my Newberry shelf, but I decided just to keep these together since there's only two of, well, I only have two of them. I take that back. There is a third one that's a Christmas themed book that is set a few years later after these books. A Year Down Yonder and Long Way from Chicago. One of them's a Newberry winner. One is a Newberry honor book. Um, the honor book comes first, A Long Way from Chicago. Then the sequel, A Year Down Yonder, is the Newberry winner. Both of those are great. The third book is great. They're just really fun. This is the second or third in the Crispin trilogy. Also, uh, Crispin, The Cross of Lead, is a Newberry winner. And I think this is the third book, or is it the second? I don't know. It's terrible that I didn't prepare myself better. Anyway, it's a trilogy. I've read it. Um, kind of a medieval setting, and uh, very good. This is also uh, two books from a trilogy that I've read. Very, very good. One Crazy Summer by Rita Williams Garcia. PSB 11 is book two. The third one is Gone Crazy in Alabama, which I don't own, but I would own it if I ever run across it because uh, it is really, really good. Uh, this is a series I've been working on. I think I've read the first four, Theodore Boone, Kid Lawyer by John Grisham, and I'm not really collecting them, but I kind of keep this first one around just to show in videos and to remind myself that I still need to read more of them. Um, I think there's three of these and I have not read any of these. The Puzzling World of Winston Breen. Katie got interested in this uh, first book or this series um, back when she was probably in elementary school and then eventually we found it this first book at the Scholastic Warehouse sale, and I want to say it was like a dollar fifty. So I decided to go ahead and get it. Then later I found what I think is the second book, the Potato Chip Puzzle. Um, I found that at a library sale, and I don't really know anything about that except that it involves puzzles. Uh, the Eighth Day is kind of an urban fantasy with some ties to Arthurian legends by Diane K. Salerni. I've read this first one. It was a Sunshine State book. Uh, I have book two. This is an ARC, but I picked it up probably at a library sale. The Inquisitor's Mark. There is a third one, and I think this is one of the series or trilogies that I want to finish reading this year for my uh, middle grade trilogy project. Oh, and yesterday when I was talking about the Aragon series, I mentioned that I had a companion book that was lost in the stack somewhere. The Ultimate Unauthorized Aragon Guide by Lois H. Gresh. I have not read that. And I showed the fourth one of the Giver Quartet on Katie's shelf. And I think I got this in my book club book exchange uh, this past Christmas. I think I gave Katie my copy of The Giver and I didn't have one. So um, now I have this one. So that's good. I've got a copy now. This was sent to me by the author, by um, it's by Candy Atkins, The Lost Knight, and it's supposed to be volume one of the Lost Knight series. I don't know if she's ever published volume two. I think she's a Florida author, and she sent me this not long after I started BookTube, and I never got it read. I still feel horrible guilt over this, and I will read it. Um, Connor O'Brien has read it. Uh, in fact, he, he got right on it, and he did a, a video review of it several years ago, so if you're curious about it, then you can search for that review on his channel. He's also a Florida booktuber. Uh, this is the first book in the graphic novel series based on The King Chronicles by Rick Riordan. I think I did finally read this book last year, right? In fact, I remember now, it was the only prompt I didn't get during the Fall Into Reading Challenge. Um, I got it read after the fact, but it was the only prompt that I didn't check off during the challenge. Um, and let me prop that up and show you another Kane Chronicles book. I have the Kane Chronicles Survival Guide. And I can't remember if I read that one or not. I don't know. Okay, this is a sequel to a book I think I have on audio. I have an old CD version. The... Um, this book is called Maud March on the Run by Audrey Columbus. And the first book, I think, is The Misadventures of Maud March. It's kind of a 
Wild West tale, and it's middle grade. It was a lot of fun. I think this is actually a YA book with a knitting theme. Chicks with Sticks. It's a pearl thing by Elizabeth Leonard. I think this is a duology. I think this may be the first one. I have the second one. I got it first, and I didn't realize it was a YA book. And I think it's up there somewhere in my women's fiction, which if y'all are interested in seeing what's there, I haven't done a bookshelf tour of that shelf in quite a while. So let me know if you're interested in that. Um, Charlie Joe Jackson's Guide to Not Reading. I have read this. It's fantastic. I love it so much. And I've um, been trying to work my way through the series. I think I've read two or three altogether. Um, these, uh, this, this is a series by Whoopi Goldberg. These were Katie's old books. They're more of an elementary level book. I have read this first one, Plum Fantastic. The series is The Sugar Plum Ballerinas. And so I put book two in my booktube spin list. Um, I mainly just want to go ahead and read these and then I will probably pass these on to someone else. And I just want to go ahead and read the second one before I do. Um, this is the only 39 Clues book I have in my possession right now. I have read the first original series and then I think there's two spinoff series since then that I've read and then this is the Unstoppable spinoff series book four Flashpoint. I just kind of keep this around because I don't have the first three and it's to remind me now that I say that I may have actually read these or I listened to these on audio. I think this spinoff series is a four book series. I passed all the other 39 Clues books on to my great nephew. I don't know if he read them or not, um, but I did send those to him a year or two ago. And I didn't send him this one because I didn't have the first three in the series. So I've kind of just had my eyes open to complete that series. And then if he's still interested or interested at all, I may send him those. Did I introduce you to Harry? I think I did at the beginning of the video. Harry! I may have said, uh, I don't know, I've started filming this video a couple of times. Um, <laughs> and one of, in one edition of this video, I mentioned that he had to go to the vet yesterday. So I'm not letting him outside and he's a little bit disappointed, which is why he is hanging out by the door. Which, you know, he's not smart enough to realize that it's blocked. No one's going out that door today. Okay, I showed these in a fairly recent book haul. I think there's three in this series. I have read this one, Things Hoped For. I have not read Things Not Seen. This has something to do with a guy who can become invisible. And there's also another girl who is going to Juilliard. And I remember just really, really enjoying this. And I think this one actually came first, but I've read this one. So now I need to go back and read that one. And I think there's a third one, but I don't remember the name of it. And those might be classified YA, according to whatever library those were. They were classified YA. All right, that's probably enough for this video. I mainly just wanted to show you the series that I own and the partial series. And let me know if you have read any of these or if you are interested in reading any of these. Um, if there were some that I showed you that I said I haven't read and you haven't read them and want to read them too, then let me know and we'll read them together. I am really curious about the dirt, the dirt Diaries. I think those look like fun. And now that I have that whole set, I am um, eager to dive into those. So that is all for this video. If you're interested in seeing the rest of these, I tell you what, I'll just give you a sneak peek there. Some I've read, some I haven't, and a lot of them just came from library book sales, so it's a rather random assortment. Um, there are a few Newberry Honor books. There's some really old things there. There's a couple of Sunshine State books. Um, I think I just shared Science Fair in a fairly recent haul. Anyway, I've got to find a place for these back up on my shelf or maybe make a TBR jar out of them. Um, oh, I should point this one out because this is probably my favorite middle grade book of all time. This was a Sunshine State book and this, if I had one to recommend to you out of this whole, whole stack or whole video, it's this one right here. The Summer I Saved the World in 65 Days. It is really, really good. It's, it's such a feel good book and I love it. So I will sign off there. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you. 
Well, I was about to sign off, and then I remembered that there were some books down here on the shelf below that I had covered up with some of the fantasy books that I showed you in my last video, but I needed to go back and pull those off and show you what is behind. Now, I should have shown you this series yesterday because um, this is the Dorothy Must Die series, and I think there may be one that I don't have. I'm not sure. Um, but I have Dorothy Must Die, which is like a retelling of Wizard of Oz. And then The Wicked Will Rise. And then these are Volumes 1 and 2 of Dorothy Must Die Stories. Danielle Page is the author. And so I have those. And then this is not a series, but I do have uh, from here down a few Sarah Dessen books. I think I had one other one that I, did I have another one that I've read that I got rid of? I can't remember. Yes, I did, because I didn't like it. It was just, uh, it was called This Lullaby, and I just did not like it. This is just kind of a random book. I'm not even sure where this came from, but I love that cover. Love in the Time of Taffeta by Eugenie Olson. That looks fun. And then this book is the beginning of a series. I think it's a YA series. Dairy Queen. And I would love to read this. It looks like a lot of fun. Catherine Gilbert Murdoch is the author. And this is an Anne of Green Gables retelling that I have not read. Anna of California. It is by Andy Taran or Taran. This I have a copy of, but I don't really think I'm going to like it. The Perks of Being a, Wallf a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. That's just an old copy I got at a book sale. This I think I will enjoy. Coffee House Angel by Suzanne Selfers. I have not read it. I think it's a standalone, but it looks like fun. And then I've got the whole Traveling Pants series by Anne Bershares. Um, I've got the main four... And then Sisterhood Everlasting, I think, is that the fifth book? I guess they're going, starting here, going in this order. Three Willows, um, The Last Summer of You and Me. I don't know if that's part of the series or not. And then I've got a couple of companion books. Keep in Touch, Letters, Notes, and More from the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. And the official scrapbook. It's like a movie tie-in. And then this one I don't think is associated with the series, The Here and Now. So I started collecting these back when, was it Trina from Between Chapters? And, oh my goodness, I can't even think now. I haven't seen, I don't think either of them have been on BookTube in a while. Um, they did a pants-along, read-along series, or read-along throughout one summer. And I only read the first book. I didn't get um, any more read past The Sister of the Traveling Pants. Anyway, my phone is about dead. I have thought of a couple other things that I'm going to add to this video, but I need to go charge my phone. And then I will come back later and uh, show you a few other things before I sign off. So my phone just finished charging, and now it is after 7 p.m. in the evening. So I'm going to do one more segment, possibly two but I've lost a lot of my natural light, so I may just have to finish this up tomorrow. But I had one other middle grade uh, series here, contemporary series, that I'd kind of forgotten about. It was uh, tucked back in here in the back, and I have not read any of these, but they look so cute. I got these at the Scholastic Warehouse sale over a two or three year period. It's Confectionately Yours by Lisa Papadimitrio, a uh, the first one is Save the Cupcake, and the second one is Taking the Cake. The third one is Sugar and Spice, and the fourth one is Something New. I think this is all there is, and these look really cute, and I don't know why I haven't read them. I just kind of forget that they're here. But I want to um, I want to get to the business of reading these. These look really cute. A while ago, I showed you the two boxes or three boxes that were on top of the table. I forgot I had another box here under the table. And 
sweetie is here. She is curious about what I'm doing. But I won't go through all of these. There's a few Sunshine State books. Um, just a random selection. They're in no certain order. I just tucked them in this box to uh, move them off the shelf so that I could put all the series books together. So this box is double stacked. So let me take this top layer off so that you can get a look at what's underneath. All right, this is the bottom layer. Some of my most recent acquisitions are in this box because I was just trying to get everything in in contained, basically, so that I could organize the shelves. So now I need to try to figure out what I'm going to do as far as a reading plan for getting some of these read. I have read a few of these. A little blog on the prairie. That was fun. I've read randoms. Um running out of time over on the far right by Margaret Peterson Haddix. And anyway, um, these are just more of my middle grade collection. It's a pretty wide range. All my whole collection overall, I have some really old books. I pick up a lot of books at library sales and then some newer books that are sunshine state books. And I, you know, I've read them, and if I enjoy them, then I like to get my own copy sometimes. So, this is all that's in this room. I do have some children's classics, and my Newberry shelf are in the office. So, I might show you those real quick before I sign. Okay, so now I'm in the office around the corner from where I usually film. And this is my Newberry shelf. I have run out of space. I don't have nearly all of them, and I've read a lot of the ones I don't have, and I haven't read a lot of the ones that I own, but uh, I have read quite a few of these. In fact, I think I have maybe 30 Newberry winners total left to read, and I did used to have them in order from oldest to newest, going left to right, like the Dark Frigate there on the very end is the third winner, I think. I don't own the first two. So a couple more up here. Witch of Blackbird Pond. And I think I have, yeah, Rifles for Wadi. I've read Witch of Blackbird Pond, but not Rifles for Wadi. Anyway, um, that's my Newberry shelf. I do have a few others that you may have noticed in the other room. There's just no more room on this shelf. Okay, and then some children's classics. These are from where I usually film, uh, my left, on my left hand and down a little bit low, like to my left, which is really to the right when you're watching a video, this is where these are. A couple shelves below my Jeanette Oak collection. Anyway, I've got some Louisa May Alcott books. Can't see all of them very well. Um, just some random things. I've got some Oz books, and then down there I've got Nancy Drew and Happy Hollister. So I think that's about the extent of my middle grade collection. Um, I think I did do a more extensive bookshelf tour of some of these a few years ago. I'll see if I can find that video and link it down below where I actually pulled out the covers. I'm not going to do that this time. If you want to see them, um, you know, let me know, and at some point in the future, I can maybe just do a shelf tour of my classic books. I do have, um, well, I say um, that's all of them. Um, I have all of my little house books down here. They're kind of in shadows right now, but I did show those last year in February, and I've got some um, Lucy Maud Montgomery books right there, and a few hardcovers and stuff like that. So anyway, that's the majority of my collection, and I'm going to go ahead and sign off this video here. If you're interested in seeing, you know, covers and things, just comment down below, and we'll work it out. I hope you guys are having a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Read a good book, and God bless you.